Hi children, welcome to Ikli Learning. So this is the second part uh, of uh, grade six uh, science chapter one. So if you haven't watched my previous video for the chapter one, please go and watch it first because this video will be a continuation of that one. So in this chapter, in the last uh, video, we basis video, we discussed about uh, that the environment can be divided into two main components, living things and non-living things. And when it comes to the living things, we call them as organisms and organisms can be divided again into three things, uh, animals, plants and microorganisms. So in this part, we are basically discussing about the differences between plants and animals. So in uh, previous video, we discussed that uh, both plants and animals are showing like common uh, five characteristics, but definitely there are differences among animals itself and plants itself, right? So when it comes to the plants, the diversity of plants. So if you see in your environment, you can see various uh, types of plants. Right. So we can uh, differentiate them based on the nature of the plant, uh, based on the like physical structure, like morphological features or uh, based on the habitat or the environment as well. So this picture will be uh, more clear. Right. So uh, if we talk about uh, based on morphological features, that means the structure of the trees. Now, uh, if you think about roots, right? So roots are other part which is under the soil. In a plant, uh, there are two things, root and shoot. So root is under the uh, soil and shoot is on top of the soil, right? So when it comes to the roots, uh, hope you know there are two types of root systems, right? Tap root, that means where we have a main root and other small roots uh, divided from the main root. And the second thing is the fibrous roots, like in the grass, you can see uh, the way, uh, there is no any uh, main root. There are so many small kind of uh, set of uh, roots. So like that roots are different, right? So if you think about stem, now if you think about coconut tree, uh, in the coconut tree, it's unbranched. They are, they, they, it's not having any branches, only we are having leaves. But if you think about a mango tree, the stem is branched. That means you have branches in the stem. So if you think about leaves, right? Now, uh, in this uh, same video, we will be discussing, if you take a leaf, leaf, uh, we can see the various differences. Like for example, some leaves are having a pointed tip, right? Some has wavy margins. Uh, some plants are single, like if you think about the uh, leaf blade, it's very single uh, leaf, but some leaves are having leaflets, right? So like that, based on the leaves also, you can see so many differences, right? And if you think about flowers, right? Based on the number of petals, based on the color, right? Based on the fragrance, right? So we can have so many varieties. Then comes the fruits, right? And fruits and the seeds. So if you think about uh, the seeds, now if you, if you remember the mango is having only one seed, but if you think about papaya, passion fruits, and all these fruits are having so many, like even we cannot count the number of seeds. So like that, based on the structural features, we can differentiate the trees. Then comes the based on the living environment. We call it as habitat. Now don't think, think all the trees are on the land, right? So terrestrial means trees on the land, right? For example, Jack fruit trees, uh, mango trees, and all this. Uh, normally, if you think about the gardens and all, house garden and school garden, you can see mostly terrestrial environment. So in that, we can see different type of uh, root system, different types of behaviors of these plants, right? Then comes the aquatic. Aquatic means which are in the water, right? So if you know about Valisne area, so it is having very long and like wavy kind of a leaf. So it is very uh, like it's very easy for them to move with the waves of the water. It won't be having like uh, very, uh, it is having very uh, flexible nature of uh, movements. So like that different plants will have different uh, features, especially now aquatic plants has to absorb uh, 
oxygen from the water. So they have separate uh, ways of uh, achieving it. And then comes the mangroves. Mangroves are basically like lagoon areas we can see. Uh, so they have a different type of uh, root systems, right? And the coastal. Coastal means the beach sites. At least coconut trees and uh, those things are having coastal environmental features. Then comes the based on the nature of the plant, right? So you know some are very small plants, right? Some are shrubs, kind of a bush, right? Then we have trees like uh, mango tree, uh, coconut trees, guava trees. These are big ones. Creepers. Creepers don't have strong um, stem. They always need a support. Like if you think about passion fruit and all, they need always a support. So like this, we can see so many differences among the plants. Then comes the diversity of animals, right? Similar to the earlier one, we can um, divide based on the living environment, right? Habitat. Now, terrestrial animals are there, lions, tigers, zebra, like that. And aquatic animals are there, like fish and other uh, animals. Air means like mainly birds, right? They will fly like some butterflies, like insects. They, are, they will be living in the air. So this is one categorization. Another thing based on the feeding mechanism, right? Now, uh, some animals will chew and swallow, right? Some will chew without, uh, sorry, some will uh, swallow without chewing. Right? Cows do this, uh, like initially what they will do is they ju will just swallow. Then only they're doing the chewing. Some will suck, right? The, the butterflies will suck nectar. Right? So different ways of eating mechanisms. Then comes the based on the type of food. So carnivores means animals who eat only meat, like tigers, cheetah, lion, like that. Omnivores, they eat both plants and meat, like us humans, my mouse, like that. Herbivores, these animals only eat uh, leaves and greenery stuff like uh, deer, uh, rabbits, right? Then comes the based on external characteristics. So from outside, we can identify various differences like color, shape, appendages, like now, for example, humans have legs to walk, fish has fins to swim. Birds have wings to uh, fly like that. Then comes the uh, locomotion, mode of locomotion. Locomotion means you are moving whole body to one from one place to another. So that can be done in different ways. Now humans, dogs, cats, they are doing walking or running. Fish do swimming. Birds will do flying. Uh, snakes and other reptiles will do creeping. So based on uh, the locomotion mode also, we can differentiate the animals. So hope you learn so many things about the diversity among animals and plants, right? So similarly, in the upper grades also, you will learn this and uh, this diversity makes our environment beautiful and very um, attractive thing. So it's our responsibility to protect our animals and our plants. Uh, because um, if we harm the environment, environment is but surrounding, including us. So if you harm the environment, that means in return, you will be also destroyed. Okay. So in activity 1.7, they're asking you to fill this grid by um, comparing the characteristics of plants and animals, right? So they have given the answer also. So earlier in the uh, previous video, I discussed about five uh, characteristics, like for example, growth. Now, if you think about growth, plants have a what? Very uh, unlimited growth, right? That means uh, within the during the whole lifetime, the plants will grow. But when it comes to the animals, the visibility of the growth can be like limited to a certain period of time, like maybe 16 years, 17, 18 years. After that, we cannot see the like height changes and all, but you will become fat, but definitely not the height won't change. That uh, is like kind of fixed. So it's having a limited growth. 
And if you think about uh, locomotion, that means moving the entire body from one place to another. So if you think about plants, plants do not show locomotion, right? But they do show movements like movements like if you think about stepping movement those things can be seen and what is the animals version most of the animals will do locomotion we discussed there are some animals who cannot do locomotion they will stay in one place and do the movements but when it comes to the most of the animals uh, we can see locomotion next thing is about the nutrition so and uh, uh, when it comes to the plants they can produce their own food right do it using the photosynthesis so we call them as autotrophic but when it comes to the animals they do not produce their own food they always indirectly or directly depend on plants right so therefore we call them as heterotrophic Next difference is like chlorophyll. I told you this thing, chlorophyll is needed for the photosynthesis. This is the green substance in the leaves. So without chlorophyll, trees cannot uh, produce food. In animals, we cannot see any chlorophyll. Uh, it's like within the animals, we cannot see that. So this is about the growth in animals and this is the growth of plants which is unlimited okay then comes the diacotomous keys uh, so this is one of the way to uh, classify and identify the organisms right but um, remember this is not the most accurate way but this is one of the easiest way so here you will be learning this right in here what basically you are doing is you I'd get a characteristic and see whether it's absence or presence. So based on that, you differentiate uh, these categories, right? And uh, always it's better to use external features that, that can be easily seen. So it's, it's more easy to uh, do the classification. Now we'll see one example. This is about leaves and they have given the pictures also. So you can clearly see some has pointed leaves, Right, some have like without pointed tips. And here it's a wavy margin, right? This is having leaflets, leaflets, right? So these are single blade, you can see, right? So like that, there are so many differences in the leaves, if you see. So now you have to differentiate this one, right? So first you take something like leaves with leaflets. So if you think about these three, it is not having any leaflets. So that's why these three are categorized into this side and leaves with leaflets, you can take these two. So in this uh, diacotomous key, we cannot stop here because each branch we can stop only when there's only one particular element in the branch. So here there are two. So if you carefully see these two leaves, you can see in this one, the leaflets are divided at one place, but here the leaflets are divided at different places. So definitely based on that, you can again differentiate. So here leaflets are divided at one place, but here leaflets are not divided at one place. That, uh, that would be better wording uh, rather than telling leaflets are divided at different places, right? So he, in this branch, we can stop because it's the end of it because only one element is in the branch. Okay, we'll move to the other side. Now, if you think about these three, it is, this is the only one which is having a pointed uh, leaf, right? So this one, we can tell leaves with a pointed tip, leaves without a pointed tip, right? So then this branch also, it's done because only one element. This part is not done. Here we have two. So if you think about the wavy blades, right? Leaves with wavy blade, leaves without wavy blade or wavy margin, right? So you can differentiate these two as well. Hope it's very clear and understood. Then we'll discuss about uh, diacotomous key for, a, for animal set, right? Now we have parrot, earthworm, dog, centipede, deer, crow. 
So don't think this is the only way you can do. Right? There are so many ways to do. Now, if I think now here they have differentiate based on with four legs, without four uh, legs. You can tell with beak, without beak. So with beak, parrot and crow will come to that. Understand? So you can go for anything. Don't think this is the only correct answer. So in this one, with four legs. So only dog and deer will come there. All others are having different uh, number of uh, legs. Now parrot has two, earthworm has no legs, and centipede has so many legs, crow has two. So in this one, again, you have to divide because there are two elements in this branch, doe and deer, dog and deer. So with uh, antlers, antlers means these um, horns. So only deer is having them. Without antlers, you can classify uh, dog without section. So with antlers, we can tell deer is only having antlers, right? Then this side is okay because both are having single element now. Then comes to the other side. So as I tell with wings or with beaks, you can differentiate. So crow and parrot are, parrots are birds. So with wings or with beaks or so two legs without two legs like that, you can have any classification. Crow and parrot can be separated here. And without wings, earthworm and centipedes are not having any wings. Still, we cannot stop at this level because in this branch, each is having more than one element. So we'll move to the next one. Crow and parrot. What is the main difference you can think of? The beak, right? So if you think about the parrot, it is having a curved beak, right? But crow is not having any curved beak. It's having a pointed beak. So don't write like this with a curved beak, with a pointed beak. Don't like, write like that. This would be better wording. With a curved beak, without a curved beak, like that. So parrot and crow can be differentiated like that. So in this side, we have earthworm and centipede. So earthworm has no legs. Centipedes have so many legs. So you can tell with legs, without legs. With legs, we can put the centipede there. Understood? So that is the end of the chapter one uh, for grade six science. Uh, so in this chapter, we are basically talked about living things and non-living things. And living things can be uh, categorized into plants, animals, and microorganisms. So microorganisms can be visible only using a, a like a compound microscope, right? So uh, in, when it comes to the living organisms, plants and animals can, uh, we can see five main characteristics there. Growth, nutrition, respiration, movements or the locomotion and reproduction, right? Uh, and uh, there are so many differences between plants and animals we discussed based on the habitat, based on uh, different things we can categorize them. So uh, then finally, we talk about this diagram key uh, where we can uh, easily classify and identify uh, plants and animals, right? So this is the end of the chapter one, second part, and there will be another video for the exercise part. So uh, watch that as well. Uh, so this is the end of the part two for grade uh, six, chapter one. So if you haven't still subscribed my channel, please do subscribe and put uh, any comments, anything you want to ask, then I can add uh, my replies there. And please share these uh, videos with your friends because especially in this pandemic situation, uh, it's very hard to go to school. It's really hard to go to classes and this is free education I'm providing. So. Please share these links with your friends as well. Thank you very much.